Those are really starting to fill out nicely. The Hua Pink Cascading Begonias with the red candy. The Sun Impatience up top. I have been loving the candy series of the Sun Impatience. When I say series, I think there's purple and red. I don't know if there are any others. I have a couple extras and I can't, I want to, I want to put them right here where these are. This is not really the best time of year to, oh, hey, what's up, Garden Friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing up? You're doing well. I'm great. Turbo says hi. Turbo, you saying hi? How you doing, baby? You good boy. A little bit pouty. We'll talk about why in a little bit. The uh, <laughs> sun impatience that are in here, they're nice. I don't dislike them, but they've reached that point where they really could use a cutback. A lot of the annuals out here have. Normally around mid-July, things need to cut back. We're behind this year, so here we are mid-August. And a lot of the annuals are looking like they could use a rejuvenation prune. And uh, I was thinking maybe instead of giving this a rejuvenation prune, I could, I could just pull the whole thing out. Tear it out and throw a couple of the red candy. Is that what they're called? Yes, red candy. I was calling them Candy Mountain for a while, and I've been trying to get that out of my head. The red candy sun impatience in place. They're tiny, but I still think that with the vigor that a sun impatient has, that they should do a good amount of growing in the next like two months. That's about how much time they have left. It's August 12th today. So uh, generally by October 15th, we might have a frost that's very unpredictable. Sometimes we'll have our first frost late September, sometimes not until November. It's just, it's a broad window here in St. Louis. But by mid-October, usually we're looking at frosty conditions. And sun impatients can normally take a very light frost and look just fine. Uh, but uh, this is a container, so it doesn't really matter. These palm trees will be gone by October 15th. They have to go back to the greenhouse. So that's how long, there's still two months. I think that's enough time. The sun is shifting. The day lengths are starting to get shorter. But that maple tree with that giant prune that it had, I think enough light will still be coming through here to pull this one out and replant with something else. The one on the other side, I don't think so. It's much smaller. Should I have, before getting two minutes and however long we are into this video, have talked about what the plan is for this week? It doesn't really matter. I don't have a plan this week. I'd like to pull that out and put something else in its place. But the situation here is that everything is just chaos. Life is chaos. There's so much chaos. Sometimes chaos isn't a bad thing. The flooring, having new floors put in my house, that started on Monday. And it's just, there's, there's so much. So much noise, so much to do. Luckily, I have a brief period where there isn't construction going on up the hill where the neighbors have been working on putting in a pool. So at least that noise isn't out here, but you may still hear some background noise from everything going on inside the house. It's been pretty quiet the last several minutes. I don't know how long that's going to last. New no, having new floors, but it would be such an adventure. I mean, it makes sense. You have to gut the room and everything, which that's not a big deal. Doing it one room at a time. So moving everything out of the room, that didn't matter. Just little stuff, took a few minutes. The big stuff, the people who are doing the floors took care of but it's all the little things that come up in between. Grab my pruners. I think this is one of those situations where I should probably work while I talk. Hello, shadow. Let's see if I can't find an angle where this won't be overrun with shadows. Maybe over here? No, nah, no, nope, there's gonna be shadows. It's just, that's the way things are going. It's fine. Maybe if I stand over here, but then I can't see my viewfinder. So let's hope everything stays in focus. I'm wondering if when I come in here to do this i should i should probably just go right down to the base instead of making little cuts and working my way down gotta try and get this colocasia untangled from in there and see how closely i can get in to make these cuts yeah okay that's decent leave like three to five inches in there so the first room that they started on with these floors they got the carpet up and uh, that was pretty much what they got done for the day. And I went in there that evening and I was walking around and I was like, something seems off here. Turbo, you gotta move, you gotta move, baby. It's an area where the floor was sloped up. It was like a fun house. Wasn't sure if it was just in my head, like maybe it was the lighting with the grain on the subfloor, the wood that was down below. But no, when the contractor showed up the next day, put a level on it and the floor wasn't even there and you can't put down hardwood or LVP or any, you know, hard plank on a surface that's not level because it'll teeter. So they pulled the floor up in that particular area and uh, shaved down a beam that was warped. Looks like they people who built the house just 
put a warped beam in there. It didn't look like there was anything wrong with it. Then they cut out some more area where the wood looked, the subfloor that is, looked like it was damp. Then come to find out that the air ducts in the basement right below everything were covered in condensation. So the subfloor was wet. Something we've known about, talk to the HVAC company that services everything about it multiple times. And they're just like, oh, it's fine. Not really. Long story short, now a whole house dehumidifier is being installed as I'm speaking down in the basement. We also had to clean out a giant chunk of the basement last night because I was told this thing was just massive. Turns out it's not. That was a miscommunication. But that's going to help dry out the ducts because the it's an unfinished area of the basement where these ducts run. That's good. At least there's a solution to that. And then the new floor <laughs> has been put down on top of the giant holes. You know, when you have giant holes in your floor, you have to keep all your pets locked up. So the poor cats, they've been locked up. The area was barricaded off from the dogs. So you find a pot to put this in. Because I think I can still get a decent amount of root out with this and keep it. Like, I don't have to throw this away. Depending on how much root I get up with this. These weren't planted all that deep. These containers mostly palm roots there that's good enough yeah these will be fine throw some fresh soil in there that'll fill back out and probably still do some flowering this year i should probably try and dig that hole out a little bit more too i'm back in the shadows so so much shadow so yeah that's what's been going on in the house floors are being torn up and what was supposed to be like a one and a half day project has turned into the entire week because of little things going on it's not going to take a few days to do the entire new flooring, but in that particular room, which is the main living room, it's the room that needs to be finished up first because, well, it's the main living area. It's where the TV is. And right now, everything that goes in that room is in the kitchen. So there's not a lot of walking space around the house either. And the pets being locked up, the, mostly just the cats and the parrot. That's too much noise for the parrot. Startles very easily in his old age, so I have to be very mindful of that. Actually, have padding down around the cage because sometimes he just, for some odd reason, falls. You know, his wings aren't clipped, but he's got, I, I don't know, senior parrot issues. I got some fresh mix in there that has some compost in it. A little bit of continuous release, part in the shadows. The pets don't have to stay locked up the entire time. It's just because, well, there was a giant hole in the floor. That's uh, not great for the cats. You'd think that they'd be able to avoid it, but I don't know, I don't really trust them. One of them's a senior, and then Pumpkin's got her little legs. Didn't seem worth the risk, so they've been locked up since yesterday morning. And they still have look, big rooms to run around it and have the windows open, so they have some entertainment. But otherwise, they've just been locked up from like eight to four when the contractors are here working with the machinery and the tools and everything prior to the whole being in the floor was just getting up extra early so they'd have a few hours to run the house and have a good time and then lock them up and then in the afternoon been letting them out through the evening what do we think does that look nice did you enjoy story time while i replant annuals hopefully so there are two in there i did double up on them but there's not a ton of growing season left i figured this will help it fill in that much more quickly by having two in place of the one that was there. Sprinkle some more of that continuous release around the surface of the soil. This is one that is, it's the Jack's classic coat, dispersed through water. So having it right below the root ball isn't all that helpful, but I figured it would be something for the palm tree more so than these impatiens. But yeah, it's a continuous release. It needs to be near that root zone since these are fresh plants and water that in, that will help work its way around everything. That looks pretty good. What do I do with my pruners? See there are some smaller leaves here on this collet case that need to be pruned out. Couldn't notice those before. And a whole bunch of weeds over here in the Dracaena that I hadn't noticed before either. Can we, is that on camera? You see it? Really? No, can't see my viewfinder. It's too sunny. Okay, that's the end of construction story time. My thinking here with this was that there's still two months left. I already talked about all that timing wise. And I love these so much, but didn't see them for sale until fairly far into the summer when I already planted all of my annuals. I would have planted a ton of these things if I had seen them in the springtime. And uh, my fall seed catalogs have been rolling in in the mail, getting notifications about discount times. There are some growers where you get a discount if you place your orders by like October 15th, November 1st. There are different times depending on the grower. There's just so much fall in 2024 stuff just started cascading, just snowballing on top of me. And it had me thinking, I don't want to wait until 2024 to get to enjoy those beautiful sun patients 
in these containers. I don't want to wait till next year. And as you already know, I already said I wasn't really that crazy about that one that was over there, so why not dig it up, throw it in a pot, and put something over there that I really like. Okay, so with this one, I need to get some soil down into the bottom of this container. All-purpose potting mix. Not going to plant this all that deep in there either because I want to be able to give this some heavy soaks. This isn't a container that has a lot of space for this to fill out. Backfill it on both sides. Same thing as before. Get some continuous release in there because why not? Oh sh Okay, I just, was that on camera? Obviously, try not to spill your continuous release. I keep forgetting that this has a lid on it where you can just, you know, you don't have to have to be taking the lid off. It's fine, whatever. Even though this is a sun patient, it has just been pulled up so there's some root damage it's been cut back i'm not going to stick this into sun for a few days i'm gonna let this hang out in the shade make sure it stays nice and moist for probably a week make sure it stays nice and moist for longer than a week but the shade part is important i want to give this some time to put out some additional feeder roots and get itself going again i'm probably going to go set this over on my potting bench this also needed to be done because that impatient that was there had gotten so big that it was shading an alocasia that's in this container right there. It's a variegated alocasia, can't go into full sun, but likes a good amount of it. It's just been a good spot for it up until it was getting shaded from that impatient. I don't know if the candies get as big as the other ones. The magenta whatever this one was called i can't remember i'm sorry it's been a few months since i planted them it's my first time planting them they're one of the landscape size sun patients so sun patients you can get the compact or the landscape and i don't know if they still call them landscape i think they call them like abundant or something of the sorts the landscape ones just get much bigger the compact ones still get huge but the landscape ones get more huge i don't think that the candy series are the ones that get all that big so these should stay smaller not that it really matters they only have two months of growing in them but i would still think that in the next probably three to five weeks those should probably double to triple in size more than likely going to take a rest period with their blooms that's pretty normal when you plant up impatience and sun patients they'll just seem like they're chilling for a few weeks and then you won't see much going on with flowers on them and then out of nowhere generally when it's warm just boom get a good amount of growth out of them they start flowering again because you know they're putting all their energy into putting out roots so they can get going that's why there's a rest period with the flowering that'll look nice there glad that i did that and it was nice to get those weeds pulled out from in here too i hadn't even noticed them because of all the stuff in front of, it was blocking my view that leaf showed last week in last week's video looking good that's the pink glory isn't that beautiful it's a color that i don't normally like but i know that it's going to mature out to just a normal green right it's not going to stay this color the weird caramely color that i know some of y'all love to me it's the color of rotting plants but something about it with the pink i kind of like it i like it a lot and this seems to be a pretty prolific plant because it's already looking like it's going to be shooting out another leaf here pretty soon columbia nothing's happened with this one you know i need to do something with the ones in the back something i was thinking about to oh look at that there's gonna be a new flower popping out here on this catlia this thing's been flowering like a champ this summer back here i have my other vci hanging out right there also just popped open a new leaf and my queen is over here as well and the queen has opened up a new leaf and it seems to be happy in this spot. I talked about that some in the garden tour, about how the queen really just wasn't, I got distracted and pulling weeds now. Queen hasn't done much for me except for in this spot, but this spot is stupid and pointless because I can't see the plant without reaching around the table. Thinking about maybe putting it somewhere else and possibly scooting the vichii to a spot where it might get some more light because it's growing more than the other. Like this is probably the biggest leaf. You can't even see it. It's so hard to get back here probably the biggest leaf that it's put out for sure a nice big one all the others that it's put out have been about the same size the queen all of the leaves that it has opened up have been just duds misshapen weird leaves until i put it over here but i can't see it over here and i was thinking i should probably i don't know where else i would put it though there's the update i have some pretty awesome aeroids that are hiding out behind everything that you can never see i can never see but they're back there and at least the queen's growing maybe back there that could work potentially here's the situation with the spot over here 
I'm still on the thought process of a different place to put the queen, so Forokianum and Thurium. I have a Maxillaria tenufolia, just called the coconut orchid, sitting back here, and it has been flowering for like a month and a half, which is very unusual for a tenufolia. These typically flower for me between, I'd say mid March and May, somewhere in there. And uh, this is, it's just, it keeps going which has me thinking this might be a sweet little cool spot over here. The Stromanthes have been rebounding very well since I moved them over there because they got cooked sitting over here. There's sirens in the background. Is that going to bother anybody or can we push through it? I say we push through it. And the Tenufolia, this coconut orchid, I can put this pretty much anywhere. It will grow well as long as it's not getting like full blazing sun on it. It's gonna be fine. It's a very tough orchid. That might be a better place to put the queen, maybe. And there's misters all over the place over here, which would potentially be adding to why this has been doing so well. But this has been doing well since before I had misters in this spot. It started blooming before I moved them over here, so I don't, that may have nothing to do with it. I could do that. Just need to pull the table out of the way and get back here. See if I can't grab a hold of this without getting anything that's gonna bite my feet I should have shoes on right now there we go and yeah you know, i actually have been wanting to give this a repot for the last several well couple of years really but you can see how it's stretching out of the container now it could use a repot at this point so probably best to go ahead and pull it out of there anyways want to see the flowers not a lot to them but they smell very nice mostly in the morning the sweet well it's like a coconut Oh, there went my new filter, fell right off the lens. A uh, sweet coconutty fragrance. That's, that's why it's called the coconut orchid. And now that spot's open to get the queen. Why am I? I didn't need to turn the camera on. No shot. I'm gonna be able to do this with one hand, but give it a try. Uh, it's not quite as far back there as I thought it was. It's more just, I'm assuming that it's tangled up with the vichii. It is. It's tangled up with the vichii. Let's try and get that leaf out of the way there, and then maybe I can pull this up those heart-shaped leaves they lock on to everything around them there we go okay that's a beautiful leaf uh, now can have a better look at the plant so this was my standard of a nice healthy leaf you can see the last one it opened up and that looks great beautiful right even before it had holes in it it was still like curly and weird looking very dusty hope that's not spider mites this one's dusty too does this have spider mites on it that would attribute to some of the weirdness oh just to be safe that's gonna go that's gonna go i cut that way too short that's okay it's fine it'll be okay I'm gonna give this a wash real quick blast all the potential bugs off of it and get it back over there i know they were only like four feet apart the spot to there. Well, that's probably more like eight feet, but still, if there were spider mites, I can't tell if it's dust or spider mites. And I don't feel like getting out my little monocle thing to look at. There's been so much dust out here because of the construction up there that I've been just constantly treating for them with soap. So I'm just, I'm going to soap it down and get it set up over there. Yeah, I do like it there. It stands out more. It is more ominous. I don't know if that's the right word, but I like the way the light just barely hits it and it stands out back there in the shade. Moisture wise, there's a lot to unpack here. I already talked about the drip over here. So I had been thinking that this Anthurium wasn't getting much water when I had it down there because there's no irrigation down there, which I didn't really care about because there's some spray from the irrigation, but just not very much. And it's a plant that I just didn't give a crap about because it's been such a pain in the butt. Sometimes when I have a plant that's really fussy, I'll tuck it somewhere where I don't have to think about it anymore. And usually those plants do better because what happens is I end up babying those plants too much. And then it's me. I'm the one who's been the problem. And I don't know if that's what happened here. All I really ever did with the Warkianum was just water it. Occasional fertilizer during the winter time when it was in the grow space, I had to water it a lot. I mean a ton. Took so much water. That's why I have it potted up in a aeroid mix that's more moisture retentive than it would probably be smart to use 
for these if you live in a humid environment, but the air, I've talked about in the garden tour with the garage door opening and closing, it just lets all that humidity out. And uh, I think that that's why it wasn't happy out there. Maybe that has, I don't know. I feel like there's better airflow over here. The light's more dappled. It wasn't getting basically any light at all when it was over there. The irrigation might be too heavy in this spot. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on that. Bigger, may as well try. It's a plant where I won't be heartbroken if something bad happen like if it dies then okay i learned something it's okay and the other vici i figured since i suspected spider mites on that one i should pull the other one out i just saw a goldfinch it was so pretty okay sorry easily distracted i get very excited about goldfinches don't see them out here a lot this is the original vici that i got at the same time as that wild Kianum several months ago and you can see <laughs> much 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 healthier plant there's you know just some damage because it's outdoors and i think that that's from when this and the queen were both mysteriously knocked off the plant stand one day in the winter time i went out to the grow space and these were both just laying on the ground and though i think it was the queen had a giant hole in the leaf like it had fallen over a plant stake and it went right through the leaf this one had a tear on it so i think that that's what that's from i can go ahead and get this cleaned up it's just over here because i figured if there might be spider mites on the one that it was right next to then i should you know probably clean it off and by clean it, yeah, that's, it's bird poop cleaner. I'm not going to endorse it and say that you should use parrot cage cleaner for spider mites. However, I was in a pinch a couple of months ago because there were spider mites on the Longiloba, the one that's up here. And I think at the time it was down here on the ground. I was out of soap. I didn't have any neem, but I did have bird cage cleaner, which is just, it's a bad idea to use this. By bird cage cleaner, I'm talking about poop off this stuff and put it in my lap so you can get the camera to focus. There we go, poop off. My logic was, well, this is mostly oils. Use the oils to break down the bird poop. Bird poop is notorious for being very difficult to clean off of things. But anything that is made for birds, well, I shouldn't say that. Good products that are responsibly made for, hi, hummingbird, it's gone. Hey, there's a hummingbird. The wildlife has just been insane today. It's been so fun sitting outside watching the hummingbirds and goldfinches and butterflies. Parrots are extremely sensitive animals, so whatever you use with them needs to be safe. This is a product that's been around for years. We know that it's safe for the most part. We don't want them to eat it. But I figure, okay, if this is safe enough to use on the parrot cage without hurting the parrot, then it's gonna be safe for the plants. But on the flip side of that, if it's made to remove bird poop, it'll definitely kill mites. But that also means it could very well destroy and burn the foliage. So when I have been using this, spray it on tops, bottoms, all over the plant, let it sit for about probably three to five minutes, and then I rinse it off. I do not let it sit on the plants. And then anything with aerial roots, I avoid getting this on those aerial roots. Again, not endorsing this thing, you should do it, but it worked so well on the Longilobas and on everything else that I've, been, that I've used it for but it's probably a very bad idea. It could kill your plants. When you think about it, a lot of the best sprays are just oils. Oh, well, look at this teeny tiny little leaf. That's the first one it ever opened. All of its original leaves I pruned off a few months ago. I'm not gonna cut any more off. I think that's good. This one still has some crispiness on it, but still lots of green, so I may as well leave it there for the plant. The oils, peppermint oil, rosemary oil, are things that I like to use for spraying for insects. And I don't know what's in the poop off stuff, but it smells like peppermint and rosemary oil. So yeah, that's been what I've been doing if I've been running out of soap and neem. Back to what may have been spider mites on here. There wasn't any of that dust on the newest leaf on the queen, which is odd because spider mites tend to go for newest growth. And it was all over the pot too, which is also odd unless it's a terrible infestation. So I don't think that's what it is. I looked closely, I didn't see anything moving around. And usually with spider mites, if you look and you just give it like five seconds, you'll see some movement. I didn't see anything, so I don't know, but better safe than sorry. This one's looking better. I love this pot, those eyeballs on it. I don't really want to put this back where it was because I couldn't see it over there. Okay, oh, did I not turn the, okay, I didn't turn the camera off. Well. <laughs> Plants are back over there now. Gave them a little sprinkle of fertilizer of that classic coat since I was out here. It's another thing I like about that classic coat fertilizer is that since it's one that's distributed by water, I know that when the plants get watered, get in here so you can actually see them, it will run around those little beads and distribute the fertilizer and I don't have to be as worried about it being right up next to the root zone of the plant, like in contact with it, because that can be tricky. 
with some aeroids, especially the more delicate ones, can burn the roots. And don't have to rely on temperatures. Because the water is what distributes it. It slowly breaks down as water moves past it. I tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated, especially with the Waukean. There's a lot to unpack here with that plant that just doesn't make sense to me. If I didn't have it in the same conditions as the... Well, no, that makes sense. I was going to say, if I didn't always have the Vichy icing right next to it, then it would make more sense, but that's not really true. The Vichy is just liking the conditions, whereas Warokianum is not. So maybe keeping them right next to each other is not a good idea. There is a lot of shade back there. I don't know if the Vichy is going to be able to stay there. I have to keep an eye on it. Might need more light. Just a foot over from where it is, the Warokianum is getting that dappled light. Vichy is getting nothing. So tomorrow, early in the morning, I'll need to keep an eye on that and see what it's looking like. Okay, it's been about a week and a half since that last clip. Since all of the stuff with the Warokianum and the VGI, here's what happened. The, the, not the video prior to this one, last week's vlog, last Saturday's video, got really long and my editing software has been doing this weird thing where it like stutters when I make cuts and I make a lot of cuts in these videos just to help keep them moving. I was at the 50 minute point in the video, 50. So 10 minutes short of an hour, and there was still 25 minutes left of footage to get through. And when the software is stuttering the way that it was, it takes, I'd say four times as long to get through every single minute with the cuts because it's like the computer isn't keeping what, I don't know what the problem was. It was just on my nerves and I said, screw it, I've had enough of this. So I just cut out everything that I just put into this video. And all this stuff with the sun patient, everything, that stuff at the beginning of the video, that all was from this morning. Those over a week ago. I could have very easily just glossed over that and not mentioned it and it would have just seemed like totally fine. Nobody would have known any different, but it's nice to be able to give a progress update, but unfortunately there's some explanation needed in order to be able to give that progress update. That's all that was. So it has been almost 10 days. They've been in this new spot. Of course, neither of these are plants where I would expect to see much out of them as far as growth is concerned, but I haven't noticed anything bad. I was wondering if maybe there wouldn't be enough light over here for the VGI, and I still think that there may not be. I might need to give this a scoot. The Warokianum has a little bit of fading down below. You can kind of see some of that right there. And I think that that's just from it being more sun. I'm not going to say too much, but more. It was an increase in light from where it was, you know, four feet down that way. And it's hard to make judgments with the VGI because its latest growth is still opening up and unfurling. And, you know, the leaves look weird on these things until they have had time to harden off. Like with this Monstera up here, it just opened a monster. Isn't that a huge leaf? Probably supposed to zoom in when I'm talking about how big a leaf is. You know, the Monsteras are. Those first unfurl, the Deliciosas, that's what I'm talking about, right here, Deliciosa, and it takes them some time to go ahead and open up all the way. It'll look like, oh, that's a big leaf, but really, in about a week, that's going to be even bigger. That's a big, big, big leaf. I'm glad they don't have the discoloration on them like the Vichy I does, because that, I don't like that. It's kind of cool because it's shiny. Week and a half, no damage. I wasn't sure if maybe it was going to be too much sun for the Warokianum over here, but seems okay. Maybe a little bit of bleaching. Possibly also just damage from here seeing the birdcage cleaner to handle the possible spider mites. I don't know. It's a plant that I am willing to experiment with because I just, it's not that I don't care about it, but it's a pain in the butt plant. With pain in the butt plants, I'm just kind of like, yeah, I'll play around with you and see what's going to happen. Sometimes what you have to do until you find the rhythm. And after I finished potting up this red candy sun patient, I realized I haven't updated y'all on my no-no in a long time. There it is. There's my no-no. There's the no-no. It's been over here, right down there in that spot. Very shaded, very sheltered from wind. I've been, I think, too protective, way too protective of this plant. And it doesn't have a lot of stability in it. It's all long and stretched out because it wasn't getting much light. I decided, well, now I have an open space right here where I can set it and it'll get some more airflow. Definitely going to get more light. I could probably go ahead and prune off that old stuff. I should probably do that. All that lower growth isn't adding anything to the plant at this point. Well, actually, that probably was. It's okay. It can still go. I would like to encourage the plant to push out growth from up top. This leaf that's coming out up here has me suspicious. That's a lot of white. Someone sent me something that had been manipulated. The only reason I don't think that that's the case is because I got this when it was just 
like it was barely anything with a root on it. And uh, when you do the chemical inducing stuff on a plant that small, they usually have really weird wonky growth. This has had totally normal growth. It's been putting out the pink. And also I'm pretty sure that when this one opened up, it had a good amount of white on it and it aged to pink. That's been the other issue with having it back here in the shade is that I don't always have the best observations of what's going on with the plant. And I wanna be able to have those observations so I can report back with how the plant's been doing. I'm probably going to give this a week. I'm gonna give it some time, make sure it's nice and stable in there and move it up into a much larger container. It can take it at this point and uh, see what happens with it. Because this is also one that should be offsetting fairly reliably. It's a pretty prolific banana as far as growth is concerned, at least it's supposed to be. But I can't speak much to that because I was a chicken with it and kept it in the shade for like the last six weeks. So I'm gonna try and correct that now. Hopefully this will be okay. This seems to be the good time to do it because you see how much shades over here and it's only, I think it's five, 445, something like that. The sun changes so much between mid July and now. Just a few weeks ago, it would have been full blazing sun over here for another couple of hours. But the angle of the sun's changing, it's over there, pine trees are blocking it. So as you saw in the beginning of the video, Sun over here pretty strong in the morning and by about, I'd say 3.30 when it's like right over there is when it moves in more into the shade and things are, well, they're more shady. Okay, so that's good. Gonna be able to get better updates on the no-no. You got a 10 day update right after all the conversation about that one. I think that's nice. Don't have to wait to see how the plants are doing over there. There's some other candies down here. You want a better look at those. Those have been filling in nicely underneath this Musa Florida right here. I need to move a few things around over here. I say few, a few. Behind this Musa Florida, there is a Bougainvillea that's gone out of bloom, has some stuff that needs to be pruned out. When the Bougainvillea go out, know, <laughs> when the Bougainvilleas go out of bloom, villas, I did it, see, I can't, Bougainvillea. Bougainvillea, when these go out of bloom, I always say Bougainvillea, need to change they're a little I mean, you don't have to. If you have them in the ground, obviously this isn't the way to do it. But here up north, it helps to just move them around. So this is done blooming. I'm going to take this off the drip and I'm just going to set it down like right over here. Right, probably right next to this planter where it'll be allowed to dry out more. It'll be reliant on being watered by hand. So I have to water it probably two or three times a week. So I want to let the plant dry and I'm changing the light on it. I do that for a couple of weeks, then resume watering back on the drip in a spot with some more sun because it's gotten very, very, very shady over here. Too shady for this plant as it is. It's a little dramatic. It's not that shady. The banana's doing well. So you know it's not that dark over here. A bloom better being moved, having some drought stress that should trigger it back into flowering. And I have a hibiscus I think would do well in this spot. Well, maybe that's assuming that I can make room for it over here the pot that it's in it's kind of big i don't actually smash anything when i put it over there Let's set this down in here i think that'll fit this is the variegated sea hibiscus got repotted in a video not all that long ago i need to do some pruning in here i can see the storms we had a couple weeks ago blew this one over i have two options here with this branch right there i could either splint it up or just cut it off zoom in so you can see what i'm talking about it's more of a tear than a break so it wouldn't be too hard to just tie that up and it'll heal itself here's the thing though i don't know where my twine is and my clippers were right next to me that's as in-depth as that thought process went i think it will do well in this spot it's going to be getting about the same amount of sun it was getting where it was before i'll show you that spot in just a moment the reason I like the spot better for it is because the drip over here has better pressure. It should get better water being over here, I would think. And now for the Bougainvillea, let's move this one. Bougainvillea, Bougainvillea, I don't care how you say it. Put that in the sun for a few days, just water it by hand. All right, last thing I need to do, since I'm out here tying up loose ends, little minuscule tasks. This is Amaranthus Perfecta Tricolor. Sometimes it's called Amaranth Perfecta. For some reason, the names vary on it. Very easy to start from seed. However, this is a plant that I have noticed if I do not pinch these in half when they get to about this size, then they just flop right over. They flop right over and they rot. So it's a good idea to give them a pinch, a nice heavy one. Make sure to leave some of the foliage. Here's a good example. See how this right there? that little one, a little bit of rain, knock that one over. 
and it's been down for days. My favorite thing to do because they're just starting to get their color and look nice, but this will make for nicer looking plants later on. This is the last bunch of seeds that I had for those, so I would like for these to grow out and flower in seeds so that I can save those seeds. Not that it's like three dollars for a pack of 500 seeds of those things, but they're getting harder to find. I don't know why this is a beautiful plant. Hopefully I will have had it up on the screen for you to look at. It's one of my favorites of the amaranths to start, but I don't know, they're just not that popular for some reason. Won't that look nice? All that color coming out from the top of the foot? Assuming that there's still time, there should be, like I said, there's about two months at least until we have frost. That should be ample time. Oh good, a long company showed up right when it's time to say goodbye. We're pushing through it. I got enough stuff I need to edit here. Comment down below, say hi. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great weather. Everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. As I mentioned in the clip where I was talking about the wild Keanum, if you have any tips, tricks, suggestions, put them out there. What have you noticed as far as lighting is concerned with that one? Oh, and an update on the McDowell. It did what I was hoping and it's correcting its growth. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's all from last Saturday's video. So much noise. That's my life these days, just noise. The house up there, so much noise. In fact, next week's video, it's very possible that I might be filming something somewhere else and not even doing anything over here. There's just so much so much going on at all times. Is in addition to the construction noise, which isn't usually that bad through the camera. When it's really bad, I just don't record. But now they've started blaring music and I can't, the machinery I can work through, not that big a deal, but I can't have music in the background because you know, copyright stuff. So that changes things. That's all right. It's beautiful outside. So lots of summer left, even though people are getting into fall. I'm not one of y'all. I'm still enjoying summer while it's here. Get to fall when it's time to get to fall. A few more weeks till mum season and all that stuff's going on. Oh, I'm supposed to be going. Why do I do this? I'm gonna be sitting at the computer editing this video going, oh my God, would you just shut up? Yeah, I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. It's a nice ginger. Looks nice. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.